the cord and let it stick in there. How do you take a long division of an X? You don't remember doing that? Mm, you did it like synthetic long division in chapter 5? Mm -hmm. We did it. You'll remember when we do it, hopefully. Okay, so like I said before, holes are points of discontinuity, aka they're removable because you can remove them, kind of. So they're called removable points of discontinuity. Um, asymptotes are non-removable types of discontinuity. You can't remove them. Um, we can remove a hole by like canceling a factor, and then we just get a point instead of like a whole line. Yeah? So for the hole, you put like the empty like, circles on yeah. it, but then when we plug it, like plug the x value in to get the y coordinate and like we grab that point, do you want us to actually put like the solid point? No, that's the point that you'll put like a hole. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. So you'll do that first, you'll like plug it back in, get the y. So let's say you have a hole at like like one comma zero. You'll go there, you'll put the hole, and then you'll like finish graphing your okay. graph. All right, so um, we're gonna do examples, obviously. Ready? No. Did you, did you have these steps either written down or take a picture of them? And these you have to memorize. So you need to like study this. Sometimes if you just do enough of the questions, you'll remember, but sometimes that's not good enough. Or sometimes you don't do enough of the questions. So whatever it takes, you need to make sure you kind of like know the system. Okay, so number one is pretty much vague, right? It just says graph. Then we're gonna, we're gonna do all this stuff. Um, I mentioned intercepts, so we did intercepts yesterday. We're gonna keep finding those. We're gonna find holes, we're gonna find asymptotes. We're gonna make sure we identify all of them along the way. So, step one, what was step one? Factor. Okay, factor. So, this is probably factorable. <coughs> what multiplies? to negative three and adds to negative two. Negative three and one. Yes. All right, so that's just step one right there. It's just factor. What is step two? Identify a hole. Identify holes. Okay, now, you will not always have holes. Sometimes you have holes, sometimes you don't. I put a hole in this one. There's a hole right here. Okay. If you have a factor on the top that is identical to the factor on the bottom, that is a hole. It has to be exactly the same. If it's not exactly the same, it's not a hole. So if one's x plus one and x minus one, it's not the same. Okay. So what you would do is eventually we're going to simplify this. We're going to cancel those because that's a thing. We removed the problem, but we can't just pretend it wasn't there to begin with. Right, so if like, I don't know, like I have two arms and you chop off one of my arms, it doesn't mean it was never there. It was there, and then you chopped it off. You'll still see it in old pictures. So it's there, but we removed it to simplify the function. So after you cancel it, you, this is I think in the steps, you take it and you set it equal to zero to figure out where the hole is. So when you set x plus 1 equal to 0, you get negative 1. That's the x-coordinate of your hole. Okay, so somewhere in this general area, you're going to have a hole. To figure out exactly where it is, you're going to plug in negative 1. I should say plug negative 1 into the simplified function. So that's this guy, after we canceled the function, or after we canceled the um, x plus 1. So plug in negative 1, what do you get? Negative 1, 4. So that means our whole, our whole, is at negative 1 comma negative 1, 4. That's the exact location of the whole. So if I wanted to graph it now, 
and put it right around here. That's where my hole is. There's going to be other stuff happening in here, but that's where there's a hole. Okay. So like I said before, sometimes you have holes, sometimes you don't. So you might not wind up doing this step. Question so far? Okay, so we took care of that step. What's step three? Vertical asymptote. When you find your vertical asymptote, so once we simplify, we no longer look at any of this. Okay, we're looking at this. So I'm just gonna rewrite this real quick. So f of x equals one over x minus, mm, x minus three. Okay, we know that x is not allowed to be negative one. That was our whole. But this is the function we're focusing on now. Don't look at the old function. If you look at the old function, you're going to wind up calling something that was a whole an asymptote, which is bad. Okay, there are situations where you could have something that is a whole also be an asymptote. And then the asymptote kind of just takes precedent over the fact that it was a whole. But you don't want to do it when it's not that case. So once we cancel, we're done with all of that. We're now here. So when we go to find our vertical asymptote, how do we do that? It's on the list. So this is our denominator, x minus 3. So we got x minus 3 equals 0 to find our vertical asymptote. So 3. That's my vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go and put that in. This is 3. Put in a vertical asymptote. I like to label it x equals 3 on my graph. difficult because you have essentially like three cases because the first two are horizontal and then the last one is like for a slant asymptote which it's not horizontal but it's still a case so for horizontal asymptotes you need to check the degrees of the numerator and the denominator again we're looking here not here okay we're done with this we're looking here what is the degree of the numerator Four. zero, zero. zero. Yeah because technically this is like x to the zero. There's zero x's up there. What is the degree of the new uh, denominator? One. So which one's bigger? The bottom. So they're not the same, it's bottom heavy. So if it's bottom heavy, what's the asymptote? Zero. zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that guy in there too. See how that works with the cases. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to have one of three situations with the degree. Either the degrees will be the same, so you'll have maybe like x plus something, x plus something on the bottom, or you'll have fewer x's on the top than the bottom, or you'll have more x's on the top than the bottom. So if you have more x's on the top, so if this was flipped upside down, then you would do long division and you'd have a slant asymptote, which we'll get to that. I think that's like the last thing I show you. It's like the hardest one. Um, if there's more x's on the bottom, it's always y equals zero. And if they're the same, then you have to look at the coefficients. So we'll do an example of that as well. So with this one, we had more x's on the bottom, so your asymptote's at zero. All right, so right now we have asymptotes. So Similar to the functions we did over here, you should have like some sushi things. If there's a hole here, then there's activity here. There's other stuff happening here. Most likely, the graph is gonna come here, it's gonna hit the hole, and then it's gonna curl down like this, okay? Because if there's a hole there, that might as well be a point. I know it's not a point, but it might as well be a point. The rest of the graph could be here, it could be here, could be here, it kind of depends. Usually they're alternating, but sometimes they're not. So we really need more information. So this is where the intercepts come in and this is where you kind of like, you make a table for the rest of it. So let's look at intercepts first. So x-intercept. 
Yeah, so again, we're looking at this guy. So we're making this y equal to zero. And then we would take the denominator. We'd multiply it over. What happens? What's um, x minus 3 times zero? Zero. Okay, so when we get this, this means that we don't have an x-intercept, which is fine. The reason we don't have an x-intercept is probably because of this horizontal asymptote covering the entire x-axis. So it's not a surprise that we don't have an x-intercept because we don't have an x-axis for it to intercept. So we don't have one of these. Sad piece. But we might have a y-intercept. So our y-intercept is going to be what we get when we plug in 0 for x. So what do we get? Negative one third. Yeah, negative one third. So that's zero common negative one third for our y intercept, which just kind of do your best when you get these fractions somewhere right around there. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's supposed to be like an actual point. I didn't mean to make that a whole point. That's a point. So, like I said before, this thing is probably coming over here touching these points and then it can't go up because we didn't have an x-intercept so it can't go up or we would have found an x-intercept it has to go down right does that make sense if it was gonna go up we would have found an x-intercept so it's staying below which means the other part of this is either gonna stay below or it's gonna go up here so if you want you can graph like one more point in here just to like make sure um, so I'll put a table over here. So let's pick a point in this general area. What x values are over here? Uh, two. Two. So if I put a two in here, I get one over two minus three, which is? One. Eh. No, negative. Negative one. one. Negative one. So two, negative one. All right, so you see what I mean. So this half of the graph is going like this. It's bound by the asymptotes. Notice I didn't make it go through the hole. I left the hole like it's empty right there. It, it's like coming along and it gets along. There's like, you know, one of them like gopher moles, the things that are in my yard, they dug a hole. So you gotta hop over it and then it goes on its merry way. And now we need to know what's happening to the right of this asymptote. Okay, so we don't know what's happening. We don't have that intercepts, we have nothing. So how do I know what's happening over here? Plug in negative. Mm. Or plug in. Just what do I want to plug in? Positive. Make the function positive. Okay, I can plug in five, because that is to the right of this asymptote. So what happens when I plug in five? One hat or one one. Okay, so I got uh, five, one half. So it looks like it's happening up there. It's not going to happen here or here. Or here, I'm sorry, here and here. Why can't it happen up here and down here? That's one of the reasons. There's more. Any other reasons? You can't cross the x-axis. That's another reason? It's not negative. Yeah. That's another reason? Yeah, so th there's lots of reasons why I can't go down there. Right? So we now know that something's going to happen here, something's going to happen here. It can't cross our asymptotes, so it's most likely doing something like this. If you want to put in more points, you can to make it more accurate. So maybe if you wanted to put in like a 4 and then you get 1, then you have a slightly more accurate graph. But as you can see, I took a guess and I was right about in the general area where it should have been. You can only do so many things. Yeah. Would you take points off if we only put one point and then like did the general like you did, or would you want more? Um, point? I think I usually say like two points per swoosh, and the whole counts as a point. Okay. So if you wanted like once you do enough of these, you'll see kind of like trends. If you wanted to just do like one two or one two, then you could have stopped and not done the third one. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, and that's it. Once you have the two pieces, that's pretty much our graph. Um, we've stated all the things that it wanted us to find and we've done all the steps except for the last step that were, was, you know, the slant asymptote didn't apply here. Yeah. So questions? Yeah. Right. Yes,
I for Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so for the whole like, does it only happen to exponential functions, or like just in this case? There's like this, this. Um, I don't know if we. I don't think we did it. Do we do like? Um, create it. That's piecewise function. It, it's a type of piecewise function. Yeah. Those are holes. But this is like a specific, it's called like the greatest integer function or a step function. It's the same idea. Those are holes too. They're just less, they are found, they're not found the same way. Okay, um, so other graphs can have holes, but they're different. They're like not because of the same reason, they're because of different reasons. Yeah, so for the hole, does it mean like it's not a terminating decimal, which is so a hole just means that the function doesn't exist at that particular okay. point. Um, but it can exist everywhere else, just not at that particular point. Yeah. But so, I'm sorry, so going to like this one, the reason it's different from an asymptote is because these, this hole and this um, point, they are in the same, they're part of the same x value. So let's say this was at like x is 1. So it can exist at 1. It just can't exist at like 1 comma 2. It can only exist at 1 comma 1, but not 1 comma 2. So that's why it's different than, than an asymptote. An asymptote would have said, no, you can't exist here or here. Like, you can't exist anywhere. So it's different. Yeah. Um, a slant is only with the horizontal one, right? Like, you can't get a slant. Right, yeah. I, I did all the questions really fast. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry, one more time. Um, you can't like. Just walk in front of the Yeah. <laughs> you can't get a slant, a slant asymptote for like both the horizontal and the vertical, right? It's only the vertical. So the horizontal. if there's a vertical, you either have horizontal or slant. If you have a horizontal, you're not going to also have a slant. If you have a slant, you're not also going to have a horizontal. It's okay. one or the other. Okay. So like there's you can't no have vertical, asymptotes. so you can't have asymptotes There's like no that. other asymptotes either, unless this is not a rational function, unless it's like a, you know, with exponential functions we have asymptotes. So then it, I'm talking that when I talk when I say that I'm talking strictly about rational functions. So with rational functions, if you don't have a vertical asymptote, you wouldn't have other ones either. Oh. Um, can talk about what? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> the last piece, uh, last. <laughs> Last piece of information we're going to do is about slant asymptotes. So this would be your step five. You may or may not realize you have a slant asymptote until you've gone through the other steps. So step one is factor. Can we factor? Yes. No. 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 Hey, never. So which means we can't simplify. We have no holes. Uh, what's the vertical asymptote? Uh, one. Good. Horizontal asymptote slash slant asymptote. Is it top heavy, bottom heavy, or even? Top heavy. Top heavy. Okay, it's top heavy. The reason it's top heavy is because the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So we must do long division. If there's a missing term, put a little place filler in there. So I put a plus zero x as a place filler. I don't know if this gets old that. Do you? Does anyone watch my videos? Yeah, I don't think it does. I'm always no, here, well. so I usually <laughs> cuts off like it's half so of them. Like, like I tried learning an entire so chapter in a night, and there was like a section. That I could Oh no, that was just because it didn't fall. Oh, so All right, so now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask yourself, what do I multiply x by to get x squared? X. And you put that here. Why there? Because that's where the other x is. Oh, that makes oh. a lot of sense. I never do that. It's, okay. it's not weird. Math makes sense. Oh my God. And then <laughs> you multiply this ten bit, this ten bit. So you get x squared minus 1x, or just minus x if you prefer. Oh boy. Do you know what you do next? Subtract. Right. Subtract. subtract. So you're going to subtract this, and you're going to subtract this. And you should get 1x, no. and then you bring down this one. What is, I hate this. <laughs> Zero minus negative x <laughs> is. I like subtract it vertically, and you can't do that. Then you're going to repeat the process. What do you multiply x by to get 1x? 
One. And now we stop. Because we're done. The quotient is your slant asymptote. You do not have to find a remainder or do anything else. Once you get the constant, you can stop. So your slant asymptote is at y equals x plus 1. So that's the good news, is we don't even have to finish the problem. So um, when we find, what, we would never have a, um, a reciprocal. Not, not a reciprocal. Remainder? A remainder yeah. Oh, you do have a remainder. My bad. Yeah, you do have a remainder. You get a remainder of 2, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. Don't matter. So oh, you don't have to worry about that at all. You just don't, it doesn't affect the asymptote. Okay. I guess. Well, what, would limits. it affect anything? No, nothing. So, in case you wanted to know what this looks like, we're not graphing them, but just so you can get a general idea. So this would have a vertical asymptote at x equals, at x, <laughs> at x equals 1. You'd have your slant asymptote at y equals x plus 1. This is a slanted line, it goes through one, it has a slope of one. So it looks like this. And then your graph would either go like here and here, or here and here. I believe this one goes like here and here. So they kind of look like these little like slanty parabolas. That's so weird. So if the numerator in the, um, the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator, it's bottom heavy or top heavy? Top heavy, okay. Right, Meaning like the top has more than the bottom. Um, also, just kind of a general FYI, slant asymptotes, also known as oblique asymptotes. Mm -hmm. Oblique. Oblique, oblique asymptotes. No, I just, in case you like, like saw it somewhere. <sighs> oblique in general means like, you're oblique. <laughs> Slanted. <laughs> right, like in geometry, you do like oblique cone or something. What? Yeah. Yeah, Wait, did. did we learn that? Yeah, oh, so you did. Clearly, I didn't it's teach it well. I was in general. Um, um, yeah, like remember there were like the slanted cones, and then there was like the right cone. Oh yeah, I hate geometry. I really don't remember anything. All right, let's do another one. Like, I failed geometry just like I failed algebra too. I failed algebra also. For me, x and y are so. Step one: Can we factor? Wait, she has a question. Oh, you have a question. Do you find x and y are slants? Oh, it just says find the asymptote, so I stopped. Oh, okay. Yeah. Step one, can you factor? Yes. No. no. Why? Because it's on the top. What, most the no. what multiplies <laughs> to 5 and adds to negative 2? Nothing. Nothing. OK, so we can't simplify them, right? No. Right. No. <laughs> OK, um, vertical asymptote? It'd be yes, a negative x two. Equals minus two. X equals negative two. Good. Okay. Is it a slant asymptote or a horizontal asymptote? It's slant. Yeah. Can you let Lauren go real quick? No, leave her. Bye, Lauren. Let's bye. bye. Math hard. Don't talk to me. <laughs> you just said bye. You just I was saying bye to Natalie, my favorite LED oh, basketball. All of this, I think, is on. Calm down. Did okay. no, no, I like stop? No, no, bye. Bye. I it's me. also not being recorded because it's over there. <laughs> 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 Wait. Oh no. All right, so long division. What do we multiply x by to get x squared? X. X. So we put that here. Oh. Then we multiply x times x is x squared. X times 2 is plus 2x. And then, I like it, we subtract. <laughs> <laughs> and you get oh negative four x, and then you can bring down the five. No, and then <laughs> what do you multiply x by to get negative four x? Yes. <laughs> Just because we're almost done, Sky, you can hold it for like two seconds. All right, so then you get x minus four, and then you stop. So your slant asymptote is y equals x minus four. And that's and that's it. Wait, what happened to the four for the five? Wait, so you got rid of it. Wait, what are you talking about? Nothing. What are you talking about? Oh, 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 oh,